So I decided to do another splash art and this time I wanted to do one of Broken Covenant Misfortune and here is how I did it. So to begin with it, I had to figure out the composition and the idea and the pose. So I had gathered a bunch of references and then from there I came up with a few simple thumbnail sketches. So this time I decided not to go too much in detail with the thumbnail sketches and just keep it very simple. Then I looked at them and picked the one that I liked the most and I started working on, you know, a refined sketch and add details in my drawing. And you can see that I spent a bit of time here trying to figure out the sketch and the drawing. But one of the things that I messed up at the beginning here was the angle of the weapons. So you can see me make this box in the perspective where you can see top of the box, but not the bottom of it. But if you think about this sketch in general, this doesn't make sense. The angle of the painting is more from the bottom up, so we should see the bottom of the weapons more than we see the top of them. This is something that I end up redoing later on during the painting phase. So at this stage, it's really good to think about everything and start adding perspective into everywhere. Even the background, the perspective angles were not exactly right and I had to redo it. So when doing this sketch phase and figuring out what the painting should look like, it's good to start hashing out everything and figuring everything out. Having the perspective done well at the beginning will save a lot of time later. And I think one of the things that's important at this stage is also the pose itself and how it's exaggerated a bit. We don't want it to look too boring. So for the poses, it's good to think about the shoulder and the hip lines and try to have them in different angles. When they're parallel to each other, the pose looks very straight and stiff and boring. So it's good to have it, you know, the shoulder and the hip facing different angles. Then once I had the sketch phase done, I was time to move on to the value stage. So I have very few layers here. The entire character and the weapons and, and everything there is on one layer. And then I have the different parts of the background on, on different layers as well. The thought process here is to just have general value ideas put in place to try and think of what the values of the general painting will look like. So my thought was that the character will be darker than everything else and that's how it will stand out in the painting from the background. That being said though, the outfit here is mostly white. So I would have to keep that in mind. So when doing the local values, the headpiece is all white and part of the, you know, the outfit is also white. So I have to make sure the lighting is in a way that it will still make the character in general stand out from the background and things don't just blend in. My mistake here was that I didn't completely think of the lighting scenario completely. I had some idea, but I didn't figure it out completely. And that's why you will see me do some changes to the background later on, you know, multiple times to try and figure it out. The lighting scenario is also a bit difficult here. So I have some light coming from the background and I thought it could be just like this large window. And then I also had another light source coming from the left front side of the character. And you will see me throughout the painting changing it a bit to kind of make the light direction in a way to make the painting look a bit better. But it would have been better if I had really thought about the lighting scenario more and figured it out before moving on to the next stage. So once I had the general lighting direction sorted out, I added some lights into the painting. I created a new layer and I put this new layer on overlay and started adding colors to the painting. This is a simple step to just move from simple values and grayscale into color. And then I merge the two layers into one layer. After that, I can select different areas using the lasso tool and cutting them into new layers of their own and start painting and rendering. So this way, for example, using the lasso tool, I would pick the face, for example, and select it and then cut it into a new layer, then lock it. Then when I start rendering, I don't have to worry about going into all the other parts of the painting and I can really just focus on that face and the skin. And then I would do the same thing for all the different parts of the, of the painting. You know, the blue part, the white part, the weapons, all these different things can be on different layers and I could start cutting it and really just locking it and rendering it properly. And this is the part that really is the most time consuming, the rendering stage. Now, as I mentioned before, if the first steps were done properly and well and thought out really good, the rendering will be easier and smoother. But as you can see, mine were not 100%. So during the rendering stage, I had to go back and fix some of the things over and over again to make the painting look better. 
Two things here that were a bit interesting for me, two things that are shiny are the crystal part and the metal part. So the crystal part was a bit of a challenge for me because I haven't really painted too many of them in the past. So my thinking was that crystals have lots of harsh transitions between light and shadow, but the light still goes through it so we would be able to see you know, different lights and different colors reflected inside it. So I had to make sure I add these different hues around the colors of the crystal. So the crystals were like pink purple so I added more purple, more pink, more blues into it. And the other thing is to add these really sharp highlights in some areas to show that there is that hard transition in the plane. For me metals though is a bit easier. I just have you know more experience with it. And for me the way I do it is to just make really high contrast between light and shadow in some parts and add some you know hard edges between those light and shadows to give that impression that it's very reflective and it looks like metal and if you really do struggle with painting metals let me know and maybe i can just do a video specifically on metals where i can explain it more and demonstrate it a lot slower so you can follow it better so then really the same thing goes over and over again with rendering. So I would select the next thing, you know, moving on to hair, the weapons, the different parts of the weapon. So you can see the weapon itself is, you know, different colors or different parts. There is the metallic part, the blue, the white, all these things. So I would select them and start rendering. When it came to the background, I struggled with the lighting here, as I mentioned before. The way I had it before, the background was competing with the character. So it wasn't really complementing it. They were values were too close to each other so it wouldn't you know separate the character from the background so as you can see i had to go back in and you know play around with the values again and the colors to try and decide how i can make it look better so obviously i had two options either go much darker or much lighter to see how i can make it work so once i had a better idea of the background values i went back and corrected some things with the painting as I mentioned, you know, the perspective of the guns and the proportions of the legs and you know, moved it around a bit and to make it look a little bit better. One more tip that I have is to use a symmetry tool. Honestly, when it comes to some things that are supposed to be very symmetrical, like the background piece that I have here, the circular piece, using the symmetry tool is very helpful because then I can make it look very even. And then using the adjustment tool, I can put it into the correct perspective. I think it's a bit more difficult to try and put everything in perspective to begin with, especially these circular shapes. But if I can just draw it symmetrical first and then use the transform tool to put it in perspective, it becomes much easier. Then the headpiece here, the white part, the idea is to have it layered over itself. So I would have areas of light and shadow and obviously the light part would overlap the shadow part so that it shows that it is on top. And these transitions should be more hard edges so that it looks like it's overlapping on top of each other. If I make them more soft, then it means the transition is also smooth and it doesn't look like it is on top of the other. One important thing is that this thing was not completely white. So I had, you know, a little bit of purple in there. And then after that, I created a new layer on top using hard light mode. And I added these extra blue and purple and pink colors into the piece to make it more, look more interesting and more close to what it's supposed to be. And as you can see in my process, I never really completely finish one piece and go to the next one. I get it to a point where I feel it's okay and I feel like it's good. Then I move on to the next, next parts. Then I realize, oh, maybe I should go and refine that piece again. So when it came to the walls in the background, I experimented first with a few different textured brushes. I would choose a textured brush and make the brush big and then just use that big brush to make brush strokes using colors that are close to the light and shadow, but not too much contrast. You know, these transitions should be very, very light with this textured brush so it doesn't look too obvious. But the one thing that really made a difference in the background was adding these chips and cracks into the wall. It's very simple. Just pick a dark color and I created these cracks using this, you know, a hard round brush. And then I made sure I add, you know, highlights and light into areas of these chips and cracks where it would pick up some light. And this alone would just give the walls a, uh, a lot more character, make it more interesting and more believable that it looks like a wall rather than just a plane with just one simple color. 
So once I had the background done, I just went in again and experimented more with textured brushes. You know, here in multiply, overlay, hard light, soft light modes on the clothes them themselves. So it's really good here to just really, you know, let go and just experiment and do it on a separate layer so that if it doesn't look good, you can just go in and delete that entire layer. And I would, you know, come in and just try different things and see what I like when I don't like and then you know decide if I want to keep it or not and then to finish it off I added some uh, you know a few minor details on other parts of the painting and the transform tool here is really my best friend because I can really have one thing done once and then copy paste it and then use use it to put it in the right perspective and then once I have, you know, the painting done in a way that I like, I just play around with a little bit with the vibrance and curve tools to make some final adjustments of the painting to get it to a stage where I'm happy with. So as you can see, the process itself can be simple, but it is very time consuming. There's only a few steps that you need to follow to start your painting. And, you know, the first few steps are the most important. If I had for the beginning done much better and thought out more, the rendering stage will be much smoother and easier to do. Now, if you want to see another splash art process, you can watch my Ruined Karma painting right here. <laughs>